What's up YouTube? Welcome to the channel. This is going to be my first video. Um, it's going to be a two-part video on how to install a universal um, license plate bracket with an integrated taillight onto this uh, Yamaha WR400. This section of this video will apply to all motorcycles. Um, this is a universal fit, so this is not specifically built for this motorcycle. Um, so uh, general mounting instructions will be the same for all motorcycles. The wiring is generic, so we're going to have to work with that. Um, the second part of the video is going to be how to um, make a dirt bike street legal, specifically in Michigan, but also uh, many states allow for this and the rules are very similar. So if you follow the basic steps and your state's guidelines, you'll be able to use this video as a guide on how to take a dirt bike and make it street legal. And also this should probably apply to ATVs. So let's get cracking on installing this, which would actually, which will actually be your first step to street legalizing your motorcycle. All right. So first things first, the reason I made this video or am making this video is because I got pulled over um, by a Michigan state trooper for having my license plate mounted in the wrong position. Uh, I had it mounted inside my wheel well and it got kicked with the mud so he couldn't see the license plate. Um, so he, he put, ended up pulling me over for that and he was really cool about it. He said he rides motorcycles as well. So he gave me a warning ticket, which means that if you um, within 15 days go to the court and show that you've mended the issue, um, they'll waive the ticket and you have a you don't have to pay the fine. You don't get any points on your license. So that's the inspiration for making this video. So you guys don't get the same issue trying to mount a plate in a random location on your dirt bike because it doesn't have a license plate bracket. But also um, some OEM brackets are kind of ugly looking and you want something a little bit more sleek. This thing's pretty cool. I'll link the, I'll link the product description if you guys really like this one. Um, it's 50 bucks. It's pretty cheap and it seems pretty decent quality um, right here. There's not really any instructions. Uh, this is just your little, um, your wiring here. So it tells you which wire does what. You're going to have to consult your um, specific owner's manual to see um, which wire is um, your ground, your power, your brake light switch. Um, so let's open this up and see what we're working with. All right, so pretty simple setup here. Uh, you can tell right here, three mounting holes. You got three wires. Uh, black is ground, yellow is power, which is always gonna be on basically when your motorcycle's on, and then red is gonna be your brake light. So if you don't have a brake light switch, you're gonna have to buy one of those and wire that into your brake lever. So when you um, actuate your brake lever, you're gonna be lighting up your brake. Also included in the kit, along with the fender, you have these um, pretty flimsy, cheapo um, uh, wire connectors. So um, let's take one of these out. The way these work is uh, you take the you take a, take both of the wires you want to join. You uh, strip them a little bit. Oops, and um, you slide them in here and you pinch them together. Um, this kind of looks like a fuse. Initially, I thought they were some kind of fuse, but uh, looking at it more closely. Um, Right here, you can see you would put um, one of your strip wires into one of these slots and the other one in there, and then you'd close it together. And since they're touching the same piece of metal in here, uh, the, the uh, electrical signal would be conducted through there. Um, I think I'm going to solder my connections together because they're going to be a little bit better, um, a little bit more resistant. This is, looks kind of uh, chintzy, so I'm not going to actually use these, but feel free to use these if you want. All right, one thing to note and something I noticed is that um, the kit does not come with any screws or bolts, so you're going to have to source those yourself. Um, tractor Supply, Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever you want to go. Uh, I'll tell you after I'm done, um, I'm, I'll tell you the size of these bolts that you're going to need, so maybe you could pick them up earlier before you end up buying this kit. But the general purpose of, uh, the general way this is going to work is you're going to want to line this up. With your fender here, uh, I think this will look good with the tail light just sticking out over here and then the license plate is going to go right over here. Um, this seems fairly easy to install. What you're going to want to do is have someone hold this in place or have one of those uh, like a wood clamp, clamp this into position 
and then either mark the bottom of your holes and drill them or while it's being held to drill the holes. Um, we're going to walk through that step by step. I can tell you exactly what drill foot size you're going to need, what bolts you're going to need, and uh, we'll get this all wired up. All right, uh, I've laid out all the parts that we're going to need to install this rear fender kit. Um, so I'm going to go over piece by piece what you're going to need so you know exactly um, what parts to get together before we start. Uh, I got three M6 um, bolts here. These are from my old Yamaha. I used to buy and sell uh, motorcycles. Sometimes I would part them out. So I kept a whole uh, like a bolt set from a complete bike. So these come in super handy. But if you don't have these, just go to a local hardware store and get yourself. They don't have to be an M6. It just happened when I had what I happen to have around. Um, any size would really work as long as it fits in that hole there. And the, uh, the M6 fits pretty well. Smaller will work too. This is not a super high stress member, so it doesn't need to be a thick bolt. Um, you got your nut that's going to be holding that down. The Allen key that's going to be uh, tightening those. Two 10 millimeter wrenches for my license plate bolts, which again, uh, doesn't really matter what these are as long as they fit through the license plate and you can get the bolt snug on the other end. Um, some electrical tape to clean up the wiring once we're done. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I think I am going to use these clamps just so um, if you buy this kit, you can do it all. Um, and if you don't have a soldering iron, that's fine. Um, I have some uh, tiny little zip ties over here to, again, clean up the job at the end, make everything nice and clean looking. Some snips to cut the zip ties. Uh, my license plate. Loctite for all the bolts. This is not something that's going to be coming on and off your bike, so you just want to use Loctite to hold everything together so the vibrations don't um, loosen up your bolt. I'm going to use red Loctite because, again, I don't expect to take these bolts off anytime soon. Uh, I got um, my electrical strip, my electric, electrical wire strippers over here. Uh, on the motorcycle side, we're going to have to strip the wires to uh, expose the um, conductive part of the wire. The kit over here, the wires are already pre-stripped. And cordless drill with the appropriate drill size for the M6 bolts. And then also I'm gonna be using this, which is a, it's a wood clamp. So it's based, this is for woodworking, but I highly recommend having a couple of these. I have five of them in my basement. I use them for absolutely everything. Anytime you need a second pair of hands, basically, you're swearing, you're like, ah, I wish I had someone to hold something. This is great. They make them in all sorts of sizes. This is. Probably one of the smaller ones, um, but yeah, you, you extend it to whatever size that you need and then you just ratchet down on this and it, it'll clamp down pretty hard. So what I'm going to be using this for is I'm going to use it in this direction to hold the fender kit where I want it while I drill the holes. A um, few things we should probably discuss uh, before we get going on this is so looking, I took a good look at the motorcycle and the rear fender actually has some holes in it already. Uh, that's because it looks like the previous owner had some sort of kit on it already and a license plate that was removed before it was sold to me. Um, so it's kind of a mess there. We're gonna have, th those, those holes don't match up to these holes, so we're going to have to drill holes anyway. But um, another important thing is uh, if you buy the um, brake switch for your brake lever, it's going to come with a whole wire kit basically to A, when you pull the brake lever, it actuates your brake light, but also most dirt bikes don't don't come ready for a brake light. So you need all all the wiring to wire up uh, a brake light. So this motorcycle already has that ready. Um, it's very simple to wire that in. It's going to be a ground, which is basically your battery, or if you don't have a battery on your motorcycle, um, because it's a little bit older and it just runs right off the magneto, um, you'll just go to whatever the ground there is or your chassis ground. You will need power. Um, and that, again, if you don't have a battery, it, it doesn't matter where you grab your power from because you won't kill a battery if you don't have it. But if you have a battery in your motorcycle, it's got to be a switched power. So basically a power that's past your relay somewhere so that when you turn your motorcycle off, your light doesn't stay on and kill your battery. And then your, um, your light, your switch, right, your actuator. So that's going to be the brake switch that you buy. Um, and that goes all the way up by your... Um, from master cylinder so as you pull the lever it's gonna send a signal to the light to light up brighter right because as you're riding that lights on anyway all the time as a daytime running light and then as, when you hit the brake lever it, it lights up even brighter so this motorcycle already has that um, the three wires that is required to stitch into this already hanging out the rear rear tail there 
So um, I hope that kind of covers it. It's super simple to get that wired in if you don't have that wired. Um, if you guys want a whole video to, on how to wire that up, I can make another one. Just leave some comments in the section, uh, in the comment section below, and maybe I can just take the rear seat off and we can walk through that. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we're not going to walk through that. We're just going to do how to mount this up to the motorcycle, how to hook it up, and then how to test it all out. Um, another thing that I did um, off camera here is I have a spare battery sitting in my basement. Just if you have the opportunity and you just have a battery sitting around, take the, the black and the yellow wire, which are your power and your ground, and just uh, hook them up to a battery and make sure the light works. Um, nothing against the quality of this, but any sort of 12 volt electrical device, before I wanna mount it permanently to something, I always like to check that it works um, because it'll save you the time if you mount it up and then you're trying to figure out why the wiring and your motorcycle's not working or something. And then it turns out that the light's just dead or something. So um, always an easy way to save time. Make sure it works before you mount it. Okay, we're gonna take this and mount it up where we want it. This is gonna be, again, very bike specific. So um, line this up to where you like it and there's no right or wrong here. Ideally, I think you want um, the end of your tail to be right here so your tail light's sticking out. Um, so that's what we're gonna do in this application and I'm gonna use the clamp to hold it in place. And while it's in there, I'm gonna drill the, the pilot holes, these three pilot holes over here. All right, so good, good idea is when you drill your first hole, um, put a bolt through it. So then um, as you're drilling anything else, it's not shifting on you. So sometimes if you try to just drill all three at the same time, you'll drill all three and then you'll go to put the bolt up, bolt in and you'll find that the, the holes don't line up. That's because it's even if it's shifted just a little bit, everything will be out of whack and then you're gonna end up using a bigger drill bit to make your holes bigger. Um, so it's always a good idea after you drill a hole, um, put your bolt in. I already noticed it shifted a little bit on me, so um, I almost forgot to do that. All right, everything lines up. Uh, I'm just gonna take some red Loctite now, put it in my, uh, put it in the nuts, and then I'm gonna tighten them up. All right, let's take a look. So up here, um, the bolts I chose, they're kind of like, they're flat, they're pretty flush, so they're not gonna stick out too much. Um, it's not ideal that they're up here and visible, but I don't think there's any way around this. Um, the fender itself looks pretty trick. That look almost looks OEM. Um, you can mount your license plate here if you don't wanna, if you don't have a license plate and you just kinda want a brake light for your buddies to see you on trail. This will act as a little bit more of a mud flap too, so that's nice. And uh, I think now we just need to uh, get to the wiring portion. So we're just going to see these three over here. Um, Pre-stripped wires. I've already stripped these with my wire strippers. And uh, yeah, these are color-coded. 
color co coordinated. So um, that's pretty nice. The, I think the previous light that was on here, which was an LED bar, um, the colors didn't match up. So we, it was a, basically a guess and check game, uh, which is never ideal because then if you uh, put power to uh, to the ground and then power to the, the power source, um, you can sh end up shorting out whatever light and breaking or just popping a fuse. So um, yeah, this is nice that, that um, they're color coordinated. All right, get started on the wiring. Uh, we're gonna take the, the provided clips and we're gonna, like I said earlier, there's two slots in here. You're gonna put one wire in here, the other one wire in there, and then clamp it closed. Um, I'm gonna tape around it too after, after it's all done. And then we're gonna zip tie it all up in here to make it look nice and clean so that we don't have hanging wires down here. Um, those provided little clips, those electrical clips, they're really crappy. I mean, I, I was going to go tape them and one of the wires just pulled right out. So I don't really trust that. Um, I ended up soldering the wires together. Uh, I, thought I, have, I thought I was running my video, but I wasn't, so we missed out on that. But um, I soldered it up and taped it. Um, usually I would put um, a shrink wrap on it, but I don't have any shrink wrap. I don't want to run to the store because so I need to get to the sheriff's office to get this inspected. So I just put uh, electrical tape here. I'm going to run the heat gun over it just to kind of um, get the adhesive real sticky, get the tape on there real good. And then I'm gonna uh, basically tape this whole harness together here um, with one nice clean pass of tape. And then I'm gonna take the seat off, pull the wire taut, and then zip tie it to the frame inside so it's not hanging and we'll be done here. All right, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm pulling the wires nice and tight and just taping little little sections of it together. So then when I go do the whole wrap, I don't have um, wires bunching up and then making that um, quote unquote harness uh, all wide and funky looking. So you kind of want to get it nice and tight and then wrap it. So like like that, pull it tight and then put a little piece of tape or a mini zip tie there. And then once you're done with that, you can go uh, wrap the whole thing in one go. All right, so here's the kind of the final product which you're looking at. I still got a, um, this is where the solders are. You can see it gets a little thicker. Uh, I still got to um, pull this kind of in through the through the seat area there, but um, we're gonna run the, the heat gun on this to make it nice and tight, nice and sticky. Um, I am probably going to put a zip tie through here to hold it here. And then once it's through the frame, nice and tight, I'm gonna zip tie it on that end and it shouldn't be hanging or anything like that. So um, let's get to doing that. All right, I'm gonna take a little piece of heavy duty automotive tape here. Uh, it's hard to kind of get the zip tie really tight around the, the wire harness here, so it can still have a little bit of wiggle room. This stuff's like super waterproof. They use this in the automotive industry um, to tape bumpers and stuff when they have incidents on the racetrack, so I'm not worried about this coming undone. Uh, I'm gonna try to make this look as clean as possible.
All right, we're gonna pop the seat off here and pull the wire harness taut. And you guys can see kind of how it's all wired up in there. You have to be careful when you take this off. I have my uh, battery attached to the back of the seat here because it's kind of no good space. This is an anti-gravity battery. It weighs like less than a pound. So it's perfect for this type of application. The previous guy had like a big old lead acid 10 pounder in there. So um, I kind of just got this on the seat here. And uh, this is the wiring that's back here. This is the this is the harness we're trying to secure. Um, so we want to kind of pull this tight, zip tie it to the subframe here. And then maybe I'll put a piece of automotive tape there to hold it down as well real good. All right, move the bike a little bit so you guys can get a better view of what's going on back here. Um, this shouldn't be anything crazy. Like I said, just zip tying and uh, putting a piece of tape to get that wire nice and tight. Um, can't put tape here because it's all dirty, so I'm just going to clean it real quick. Uh, once we get it clean, we can get it all snug. All right, that should do it. Now we're gonna put the seat back on. This uh, wire down here is nice and tight, which is what we want, and um, assemble everything. And then we're, let's get to putting the license plate back on. All right, so now that we got everything mounted, the, the fender kit, <clears throat> I'm gonna take my license plate. I already drilled two holes here in the center because these side holes don't line up with this, uh, sorry. With the fender here, they stick out past that. Uh, this is pretty narrow, so you're gonna have to drill it through the center. Um, don't have to be super scientific about it. And then the next step would be basically to drill these holes in the fender. So try to get it as center as possible. You can just get them started with the plate in there and then drill through it after you uh, remove the plate. Makes it easier. Okay, super simple. Got my uh, license plate bolts. Yep. <clears throat> So uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm usually having to thread my bolts through the holes. Um, that's just a good way. If you pick the right drill bit, they're nice and snug, so you're at, you can actually um, uh, keep it keep everything from rattling around. Even though if you're using a nut on the other end, it kind of keeps it tight. But if you put a hole that's like ten times as big as uh, as the, the the bolt you're using, it kind of makes it sloppy and um, not a fan. <laughs> So we got the bolts through and all we're going to do now is add some Loctite and then tighten this, this stuff up. Again, this is going to be red Loctite because this stuff is not coming off. We don't want this to come off. so. Be generous with the red Loctite. That's it. Um, I'll bring the phone closer here so you can take a better look, but um, this looks pretty nice. 
Um, this will pass any sort of state inspection that requires a license plate. Also, something I didn't know about this is actually on the lower part of this tail light is actually a white LED light, so it um, doubles up as your license plate light, which a lot of states like to have, um, have that as a requirement. You need a license plate light on top of a brake light, so kudos to this company because that's pretty sweet and it's flush, you can't see it. Um, so the second part of this video, we're gonna go over what you're gonna need to make your dirt bike fully street legal. I'll walk around my bike, I'll tell you what the officer was looking for when I got this thing um, legalized. So um, you can go ahead and go do it yourself. All right, so the rear fender's on. I think that was pretty easy. Uh, I think anyone watching this video can do it. Um, <clears throat> let's take a good look at this right here uh, I think it came out pretty sweet this plate's kind of uh, dented up because it was all bent into place before but tail light um, right underneath there if you can see that white strip that's the um, license plate light I got my two bolts holding my license plate down um, up top here I got my three bolts they're kind of flush which is kind of nice they got a big shoulder so they won't pull through the plastic uh, looks really clean I really like it I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, there'll be more to come for sure. This channel is kind of going to be a little bit of motorcycle stuff, a little bit of DIY house stuff, some tool reviews maybe. So if you like the video, give me a like, maybe subscribe. Thanks for watching.